Hi there, everyone. Rob here with today's Western Pacific weather update. It is currently the 28th of September 2012. We are continuing to watch a few tropical systems out here. We have Eleanor moving off towards the north, just towards the southeast of Japan, and also. Of course, Super Typhoon Jellowat continuing to spin up here. Absolutely looks like a blade saw pulling off there towards the north. Still bringing some heavy rain showers across the Philippines and Taiwan. I do want to note that across Japan, much cooler temperatures are in place. That's one reason why my voice may sound a little bit off. And just if you watched actually my live cast earlier on today, may have seemed a little bit lackadaisical because it is currently well, starting to get in the flute season across Japan here. It's the time of year where you start seeing people wearing face masks on the train, for example, or just around generally in public, especially in Tokyo, since you live in such confined quarters. So, uh, yeah, it, definitely diseases will spread really quickly, so I'm not feeling up to par, but I am still going to be here to bring you this tube cast because we still have these storm systems continuing to roll around here. Let's start off with Jellowat, though, and then we'll get into a uh, winter moving into about the halfway point of this cast. Storm system continuing to spin up. It does look like heavy rain showers are still falling across the Philippines as this inflow works its way in from the west. Actually, let's take a look at some of the rain totals over the past 24 hours. And we can see here, actually, the one report of 54 millimeters of rain. I do know that some localized area definitely have seen more just from reports I'm getting from the general viewer out here across the Philippines, but also over towards Taiwan in Yilan County there in southern Taiwan. 132 millimeters was reported in the past 24 hours. And across Japan, already starting to see these showers kick in across the southern Japanese islands because the outer rain bands are working their way in. Take a look at JMA's rain and the pending and looming situation of this severe a tropical system starts to come into scope. You can see half of that circulation down there towards the south, also across Taiwan. Clear skies for the time being, but uh, definitely going into the remainder of your Friday if you are watching this into the afternoon hours. It probably is not the case. Heavy rain showers are going to be expected there across extreme western portions of the southern Japanese islands, including Miyakajima. You're going to be seeing some heavy showers down there and also over towards Okinawa. Going into your Saturday, you know, your Friday, I would not be surprised you start seeing some very intense rainfall. Now, one thing I do want to go back and note is that we did expect the storm system to gradually start the weekend by this time, and it has done that. It's past its peak intensity, but still a violent typhoon. It's still considered a super typhoon by the Joint Typhoon Warning Center. You see that very clear and defined eye and the eye wall around it actually extending right about this far out. That's where we're going to be seeing those typhoon strength winds. So it is a very potent storm system, not one to be messing with out here, and it does look like yeah, about 250 or more millimeters of rain could fall on the eastern slopes of Taiwan here off there towards the north basically this entire area and off across the southern Japanese islands. Flooding is going to be expected here but not just that coastal flooding due to storm surge. Because as the storm system starts to push off there towards the northeast, it's going to be kicking up some 10 meter high waves potentially rushing off there in that direction. Very dangerous conditions. This is actually from the Euro model. Let's take a look at GFS and see what they're saying because they kind of agree on this storm's track. But most of them are disagreeing on the speed of the storm. GFS showed here saying by Friday we'll be running over uh, Miyakujima and then into Okinawa going in the Saturday morning. Definitely going to be reading some heavy precipitation there. JMA is a little bit slower uh, saying out to Saturday and by Sunday in the Monday affecting portions of Japan. This is actually showing Sunday evening. Very likely scenario moving off towards the key peninsula. Main threat here, I think, is going to be flooding once you get into the latter part of this run into the early part of next week. Still might see some gale force winds. Definitely want to clear off your decks, take in your clothes that are drying outside. I know that seems like a simple factoid, but uh, I am personally have experience for getting my clothes outside uh, during a rainstorm, and yeah, that's really regrettable. But also, the storm system is going to start to go extra tropical, so some of the winds are going to start to expand out away from the center of circulation. And yes, across the key peninsula, Shikoku, you're going to be seeing some windy conditions, but even off towards northern Japan, Tohoku, you're going to be seeing some very gusty conditions as well, away from that center of circulation, and definitely the heavy rainfall. Uh, as this continues to run across central Honshu off there towards the north. Let's take a look at JMA's official track from this. And they have a churning just south of the southern Japanese islands. That doesn't take away the fact that you're definitely probably going to be seeing some coastal storm surge and very high waves kicking up here. But also, 
moves off basically directly over Okinawa, so a very intense and strong system. Now, yesterday, when we were talking about this storm, by the time it reached Okinawa, we were expecting it to be uh, much weaker than what it is now. Well, it does look like you're still going to be seeing a strong and potent storm system. 90 gusting up to 130 knots, 930 HPA when it passes overhead, so I know that the military bases there have been setting their T-cores. If uh, you are one of those people that that does apply to, strongly advise taking the proper precautions. I know that you just got over Samba, so uh, definitely know how to deal with storm systems out across this area. But as this starts to run off towards the north, I know that we have a lot of viewers in and across Shikoku, the key peninsula. Flooding is going to be high at risk here. Gale Force winds into Tokyo. I do plan on this Saturday trying to head out towards a, one of the peninsulas here, maybe around Nagoya or all the way down towards Kanagawa at the end of Tokyo Bay. Trying to get some footage, so definitely want to watch out for that going into the weekend as the storm system runs up the Japanese coast. This is the track from the Joint Typhoon Warning Center in a line with JMA on its track off there towards the northeast, bringing those very gusty winds with it, but also running over the Kanto area, bringing those heavy rains as well. So urban flooding could be a risk, no good news. Uh, and urban the areas here in Tokyo are very well drained and very good uh, construction on all this stuff, the infrastructure that is. It's a fairly decent, so I'm not really too worried about here, and also the buildings. Typically, these buildings are built to withstand massive earthquakes, so a little bit of wind. It does start to shake the walls, but you don't really see too much damage come out of them. And here's a look at the mono consensus as the storm moves off there towards the north, turning towards the northeast, bringing all those gusty winds with it as well. But good news is that they all are aligned on the track of this storm. Bad news an alignment takes them over basically every single southern Japanese islands, bringing those typhoon strength winds with it. And then off towards the populated areas here, the core areas of eastern Japan. Now I did say I was going to talk about a wind here because across Tokyo currently some gusty winds coming in from the north. Actually very cool air out here, thus the cold and the flu season is setting in. Well that storm system is just lingering off the coast causing those winds to start to pull in from the north, kicking up the seas as well. Osagara Island's actual wind report out there of 95 kilometers per hour. All right, now the Izu Islands, Osagara Island saw a report of 105 kilometers per hour, so very gusty winds out across this area. To the severe tropical storm and the waves also kicking up upwards of 5 meters high along the Japanese east coast. Actually you could be seeing about 100 millimeters of heavy rainfall into the Tohoku region as this does brush off the east coast and run off there towards the north. Now there's a stationary boundary kind of lingering actually just south of Honshu off there towards east and that will be making things a little bit wet going into the latter part of the week as well. So definitely lots of stuff going on. Now once it starts to pull off towards the north, dry air will influence behind it. So it does look like it's going to be relatively dry for a short period of time until Jalawat starts to pull off towards the north. But for the time being, Taiwan, southern Japanese islands, even the northern portions of the Philippines, you are still under the gun of this violent storm system. Flooding and landslides, once again, still a threat across the eastern portions of Taiwan, northern Luzon, and also coastal flooding in these low-lying areas across the southern Japanese islands. If I was to put typhoon warnings out on all these areas, everywhere I just covered in the red, I definitely would put one on all these land masses across this entire area. But that is all for right now, everybody. Thanks again for watching here at WesternPacificWeather.com. If you have any questions, comments, or suggestions, please post them in the comment box below. Also, if you have any photos or videos of any of these storms out here and how they're affecting you, please let us know not just these tropicals, but also some severe weather going across Korea and over towards India, some very severe flooding. So please go check out the website. We do have some articles written up on these particular situations outside of the tropics. But I will leave you here with a video, one of my more favorite satellite imageries. This is the MMIC just showing here what Eleanor is looking like as it does pull off there towards the Izu Islands. Very disorganized, but still, nonetheless, a little bit of an interesting piece of satellite footage. Stay safe out there and have a great day. Bye.